Colin. Yeah. Looks like we got an opportunity here to measure the shear strain on an aluminum tube. And the reason for that is either to get a torsional value or, or a shear value that we can convert to torque mm -hmm. or uh, to measure the strain on this particular tube to make sure we're not going to have it twisting or having any problems. Okay. Uh, I've done all the surface preparation up to the neutralizer 5A. Now we need to make a mark. We need to make a mark that's along the long axis of this tube and I've come up with a fairly simple way to do that. You basically take the tube, you mount it or hold it on the surface, mm -hmm. take a, a, a 90 degree something or other and run it down the length of the tube. And this makes this nice little line, okay? Okay. Our alignment mark. And so once we've done that, we need to take the neutralizer 5A in those lo the location. We're going to first bond the uh, 250 US because it doesn't have lead wires on it, and the, the 120 or the 187 UV does. So I'm going to take neutralizer 5A, and at the alignment area for the 250 US, I'm going to scrub it. both sides of that line. Take a gauze sponge. And I'm going to absorb that excess liquid from neutralizer 5A. And now that we've made our mark and we're chemically clean, okay. we need to stage the gauge. And you want to go ahead and do that for me? Sure. Take the glass plate. We make that chemically clean with the neutralizer 5A. In this particular case with the 250 US, the one we're going to put on first, okay. we're going to make we're going to have to put the tape because it's such a wide gauge. We'll need to have two pieces of tape that are side by side or overlap slightly to one another. So the 250 US is fairly large. Blunt nose tweezers to handle the gauge. I neglected Thank to you. have those that available. Bad supervision. He's got his chemically clean aluminum plate. Now, noting that that is wider than three quarters of an inch, so we'll take two pieces of tape and overlap them. Pulling the PCT 3M tape. He's throwing away that first piece because it might be contaminated. And we're going to be wrapping it around the circumference of the... Uh, right, we're going pipe. to go in the hoop direction of the, the pipe because that is going to have the least double curvature associated with it. If you do it along the long axis, the tape goes into double cur curvature and can possibly damage the gauge. So it's just going to place it transverse to the, the long axis of what I would call the, the windmill. Going to make sure that's well established. He doesn't, doesn't want to have any adhesive leak through it. Put a second piece that overlaps and is wide enough so it covers the entire gauge. Now this is kind of a two man operation because our shaft is not holding still. So we've got our alignment mark here. Might be very difficult for you to see that, but we can see it here. He's going to lift the gauge at a shallow angle, locate the alignment mark. Let's turn it down on this end where I cleaned it. And he's going to tack the gauge down in the appropriate aligned position. Now, if you don't line it up properly, you're going to start attenuating some of your signal. So he's being very careful to make sure that these two alignment triangles are in line with the burnished alignment mark that we have in place. So he's pretty comfortable with that. So now we'll expose the bonding surface. And what's the next step? Use our catalyst. Catalyst C, the blue top bottle. We're, by the way, we're bonding with the M-Bond 200 because this shaft is not going to get hot or cold and it's going to be a, what we would describe as a quick and dirty torque test. allow that to air dry for one full minute. Now this particular gauge, the 250 US, once it's properly bonded in place, will give us twice the shear strain on this aluminum tube or four times the uniaxial strain. And if you know the modulus of your tube, 
the thickness of the wall. You can calculate the strain or the shear strain that would be applied on this and calculate back to a known torque or load. So we wait the, the full one minute of air dry time. So we've waited our one minute of air dry time for the catalyst and now we need to apply the adhesive and the clamping pressure. Colin is going to take, because this gauge is so wide, he's going to make a little bead of adhesive across the cusp of the tape so that it uh, has enough adhesive so it doesn't starve the bond line. So start at one side and it'll lightly go across. And now he's got a full bond line across there. He's going to take his gauze sponge. He's going to squeegee in across. Because it's so wide, he's going to have to use the heel of his hand rather than his to traditionally use the thumb of pressure. And he'll hold this for one full 60 second minute. And I got you covered for time. Now, the reason we hold it for a minute is the Catalyst C is a controlling agent that slows it down. You want to have it properly bond, and if you don't leave it for a minute, you might have some gaps or can discontinuous behavior. But the 250 US is a favorite uh, because it's easy to install. Uh, it's a full bridge pattern, so you get uh, twice the shear strain or four times the uniaxial strain, lots of signal. Uh, and in most cases, it will cancel bending. There's a couple of shear bending application locations where it might have some uh, bending sensitivity, but for the most part it's relatively insensitive to bending. So this could be an application where an automobile manufacturer wants to know the torque on their half shafts that's coming out of the engine, or the Navy wants to know how fast a ship can go, how much horsepower is coming out the propeller shaft, and how much is that, uh, is that appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we are one minute. So now he removes his hand there. And we wait for two minutes under the tape. The adhesive system, once you've got it clamped into position, you have to wait for two minutes. Okay, we've completed our two minutes under the tape, and now we need to remove the gauge handling tape. Yeah. Colin, you're experienced with that. How do you do that? 180 degrees yep, back on pull itself? Pull back on itself so that we don't peel it up. Putting the adhesive into shear so that it doesn't uh, damage the bond line. It's the time when you're on camera, you're nervous that everything goes well. <laughs> and it appears, based on everything I see here, this is a fairly good installation. There's a little fillet of adhesive around the outside. You might have put a little extra adhesive on it, but that's okay. Better to have enough adhesive so that you're fully bonded rather than starving a corner. Now this 250 US would be wired as a full bridge, and the terminals 2 and 4 would be jumpered together as either the S plus or S minus terminals. And I can, you can, if you need a diagram of this, get in touch with uh, Applications Engineering. We can send you a copy of the circuit diagram for this particular gauge. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to bond a 187 UV. The 187 UV is a, a dual shear gauge, which will measure, measure the shear strain. And if you put two of them 180 degrees apart from one another, they could cancel bending. Now this particular one has the option P2 on it, and we wanted to de demonstrate the use of a P2 gauge in a shear application. Okay, we've completed our surface preparation on our second installation on this shaft, which would include uh, wet abrade with conditioner A, or degreasing it first, wet abrade with conditioner A, and a scrub with conditioner A. And now we're going to scrub it with neutralizer 5A to get the pH of the surface down or up to the, the value of either neutral or slightly basic. Mm -hmm. So Colin's going to take some of the neutralizer 5A and in the area where the gauge is going to end up, we're going to clean the surface, take a dry gauze sponge, fold it in quarters, <coughs> and absorb that excess neutralizer 5A. Now because this gauge has the option P2 and because we're going to be going around the hoop direction of this tube, the tape will have to go transverse to the, the long axis of the gauge. So go ahead and chemically clean your aluminum plate, or your glass plate. Nice and squeaky clean. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to expose the, the bonding surface of the gauge. And this is a little tricky with these option P2 gauges. It's, uh, I, I tend to think the lead wire is a little bit in the way during the install. But if you're careful, it shouldn't be a big deal. Just take it all out. 
lay it out on the uh, glass plate. Now since the long axis of the tape is going to go the long axis of, of the, uh, uh, the hoop direction, you might want to lay it out like this so that we can get it across it a little longer like I that. You. Okay. So you're going to take a strip of tape, oh, four or five inches long. And this is the PCT 3M tape. He's going to place it transverse to the long axis of this 187 UV. So the tape will be in the hoop direction, not we won't put the tape into a double curvature which could damage the gauge. Lifting at a shallow angle, he's going to transfer the gauge from the glass plate. Once he's past the gauge, it really doesn't matter the angle. Now he's going to set it up, align it on the alignment mark. And once he's comfortable with the alignment position, as with all M-Bond 200 installations, we're going to expose the uh, bonding surface and put down the catalyst C. It's eight or ten times on the inside of the neck of the bottle to remove the most of the catalyst C from the brush. And with a single wiping motion, he's going to try and cover the entire 187 UV, which he did. And now, as is typical with M-Bond 200 installations, we have to wait a full minute of air dry time for the catalyst C. The alcohol in the catalyst C would be a contaminant during, in the installation, and most of this is going to evaporate away. It's about less than 0.2% of the activator or catalyst that's in the material. Okay, now that our Catalyst C has had a minute of air dry time, we're now going to apply the adhesive. Colin has a gauze sponge folded in the quarter at the ready. He's going to peel the tape back so he gets just a little bit more of a cusp there. And then a single drop of the adhesive, a big drop of the adhesive on the gauge. And then he's going to squeegee it into position with the gauze sponge. And follow with his thumb. Now his thumb is big enough in this particular case to cover the entire 187 UV and he's going to hold his thumb on there for one full 60 second minute. And If you're upside down underneath a ship's propeller shaft this might take a long time. <laughs> okay, Colin has got to the end of his one minute of thumb pressure and then we wait two minutes under the tape. Okay, he's holding down the lead wire system to keep it from straining the gauge and he's also going to pull it 180 degrees back on itself, being careful. Okay. And now this particular gauge, the 187 UV, is here to measure the shear strain. And this could be used to measure torque. However, it can be slightly sensitive to bending if you were to put two of these gauges, one 180 degrees apart from one another, and wire them as a full bridge that would certainly take any bending out of the situation. Most people tend to ignore the bending because it's such a small component, but if you have a very accurate measurement, you need to do that. The 250 US is a full bridge pattern. It's going to give you twice the output as the 187 UV, and in most cases will cancel bending except for some special cases of shear bending that's going on in terms of shear of the shaft. But these are the two gauges that are typical when you're wanting to measure the torque or shear component on a shaft and convert that to some sort of horsepower, or some sort of input to a finite, finite element model, uh, verifying your losses in your transmission. Uh, there's a number of things that can happen here. So while it is these two series right here are sensitive to bending, the output of the signal would be so small as to maybe be ignored. And there you have it, torque measurement using strain gauges.